Actually, when when I know the answer, I you can't stop me. So we are not shooting a film. That's okay. We can be a little bit relaxed for this daily DB episode. Hi guys, Arun this side back with another daily DB episode. I am enjoying these episodes. I don't know if you can feel my energy with each and every episode is going up, and I'm loving it. And I guess. all of us are building an amazing community of dba i guess i should share this good news with all of you like within last 28 to 30 days from the time we have started this daily dba show we have more than 1000 new subscribers on our youtube channel great job congratulations to all of you for making this community a little bit big but i believe like we will continue to build it even bigger community so with that vision in my mind or that vision i want to pass actually that vision to all of you my vision as far as every one of you know that i want to build the biggest online dba community where all the dbas learn together grow together there is no one single expert i am not the expert i am actually learning from all your questions so we all learn together and build this community as i always request please try to share these videos with your friends colleagues and other people who are into dba world bring them onto this platform and i guess we all will enjoy that being said i would still request not to forget send your queries to support at dbagenesis.com i would love to answer your questions most of the questions i do reply reply back by sending you a link or a document or probably a video but some of the challenging questions which i believe the other dbas must know i tend to pick them up for this daily dba show that being said let us start over today's episode with the first question of the day i want to copy table structures owned by single schema from one database to another database without the table rows how can i achieve it this is very simple like you don't want to copy the rows of a table so you have a table structure you just want to copy the table structure from source to target this can be achieved easily by using export import utility of course it's an old utility but it is still valid in all the databases all the database versions so you can either use export import utility and use a query which will filter out all the records and then you just have the table structures that's method 1 The next tool that you have is data pump. You can also use the data pump utility to export the table structures from source to target. It will only get you the structures. You won't have to get all the records. It's very simple. The third method that we have is by using the inbuilt package that comes with Oracle. It is known as DBMS underscore metadata dot get DDL. This package will get you the create statement of an object. Let's take you create a student's table. in the source database and now you want to get the ddl statement the exact statement that was used to create the table on the source database without getting the details of the records it will only get you the details of the create statement of recreating the table whether you want to create in the same database or you want to create it into another database like your wish so these are the three methods the first one is export import you can use export import the traditional utility The second one is data pump that's the advanced export import utility and the third one is dbms underscore metadata dot get ddl that's the package i believe that will help you let's move on to the next question how can i count total records from a table faster i have answered this question earlier also but this is a good question for all the experienced dbas remember this in all of your application developments or if your application team is using select count star from a table do not go with this kind of query this will slow down the database performance because when you use select count star from the table it is counting all the records inside the table so understand you have number of columns involved and then the number of records involved so it's like two dimensional first it will check the number of columns then it will count the number of records so it involves extra processing when it comes to the database table but understand what if you perform count star on primary key inside the database so what are the benefits or what are the conditions of a primary key primary key means it will be unique 
like no two values inside the column will be same that is primary key and the second condition for the primary key is none of the rows or none of the values inside that column will be null right. So that means each row will have a definite value inside the primary key column that is one of its properties right. So it is do you think like it is better to throw oracle in order to count the entire table like columns and records or it is better to just ask oracle to count the number of values inside the key column that is the primary key. I guess you got the answer. So whenever you want to count the number of records faster inside a database table I always request select count rather than using star try to give the primary key name whatever your primary key column is inside the table give that column name and then like you can count all the records. Of course this result will be much faster compared to the counting star from the entire table because now you are feeding only one column to the query. So to answer this question how can I count total records from a table faster it is simple use select count primary key column from the table name and you will get the records and the output faster. For all the developers out there whenever your application needs to count the number of records from a table try to use this method. Try to code your application in a way or try to write PLSQL procedures or application level code in a way that it only selects the values from the primary key column and you are not counting or feeding the entire table to the count function. That being said I hope you all get the concept so let us move on to the next question. In your experience what is a good number of database connections inside the database? Wow. I think this is one of the logical and real time questions that I have seen till date. Now this is something you can answer only with experience like uh, you cannot answer this question just by taking a training and then sitting into an interview. You need to have real time experience in order to answer these kind of questions. So now let us analyze like what will happen when more number of connections are there inside the database. The more number of connections the more number of PGA will be allocated right. So if more PGA is allocated we need another big SGA area. So what is that good range like recently first of all let me talk about the client story then I will answer this question. Recently I was working on a client's database and on that database I saw they were constantly having more than 3000 user connections. Like can you believe like 3000 user connections it is a huge like it is a very huge number for the oracle database. You are simply killing the database and that is not the way database has been designed. The oracle database is designed to accept like parallel transactions more number of transactions like you throw hundreds of queries towards the database that is a separate case but throwing thousands of connections towards the database is again a separate case alright. So these two are completely different things you need to understand throwing 3000 queries towards oracle database is completely different while pushing 3000 connections to the database is different. So when you tend to push these many connections to the database you are actually involving lot of database processing, lot of CPU, lot of resources which are actually getting wasted. You are not getting any benefit out of this kind of application development. So if this happens in your database let us take you see that your application is throwing more than 1000, 2000, 3000 connections to the database this is like the worst application development. I think there is a problem with your application. So let me tell you what is the sweet number or what is that sweet spot. It is like 200 to 300 connections inside the database is way more than enough. Tell me like why would you need so many connections like thousands of connections. You would never need thousands of connections. You can throw 10,000 like 1 million queries towards the oracle database accepted but increasing the number of connections towards the oracle database you are actually grilling the oracle database which 
it has not been built to work in that way right it is good for processing more queries but it is not good for throttling the number of users that come to the oracle database now that being said the good number that i would recommend in any oracle database whatever might be the cpu whatever might be your ram onto the server even if you have terabytes of ram i would still recommend you to go with maximum 300 database connections like if your application is trying to go over 500 connections or if you see more than 500 connections inside the oracle database i think that's where your application design or application has completely failed so application design needs to be re-modified changed or you need to make changes to the application code in order to reduce the number of user connections so that the database can perform well now that being said i want all the experienced dbas try to audit your current environment check how many user connections happens roughly inside the database you can take an average on weekly basis like for the past seven days how many connections happened on monday tuesday wednesday thursday or you can start from tomorrow and keep a record for next seven days and then find like what is the average of the connections that happens inside the database right so once again just to answer this question the perfect range for oracle connections is 200 to 300 if it is going above 500 i would feel that it's into already danger zone and the client that i was working with i saw like they are having average 3000 connections we had to work with the application team to reduce the number of connections inside the database i think this was the first question from our first episode till date which i love to answer because this is something no one can answer in general even if somebody is trying to learn oracle and then go for interviews or until unless you actually have core real-time experience you cannot answer some of these questions now that being said let's move on to the next one one query takes few seconds in microsoft sql server and same query takes few minutes in oracle why because you want to prove that microsoft sql server is better than oracle so people should focus on microsoft sql server good for you if you are in microsoft sql server dba but let me tell you this i can give you thousands of examples where oracle will outperform microsoft sql server so by looking at one query you cannot say that microsoft sql server is better than oracle it depends on the size of the row how the storage happened what was the table what were the statistics involved while you execute the query what was the load on the cpu a lot of factors go in so by just executing one query on microsoft sql server you can't try to prove that sql server is better than oracle come to me talk to me i'll give you maybe 10,000 examples where Oracle will outperform SQL Server. So let me tell you this, it's not about that one query that you ran into Microsoft SQL Server that outperformed the Oracle database and you just want to justify that SQL Server is a great database. I mean, we can definitely prove why Microsoft SQL Server cannot work in certain situations. There are a lot of situations where people have migrated from SQL Server to Oracle and they have seen a different world altogether. So don't compare the databases in terms of the query performance. I mean, I hate it. And if you come to me with these kind of questions, like I personally hate because there are a lot of details involved, a lot of things involved. What was the average row length? How the record was stored? everything comes into picture and by just one query you cannot define the winner and the loser it is the worst thing to define the winner and the loser by just looking at one query i mean the same query might outperform in some other database so does that mean microsoft sql server is bad right so that's the analogy like come on guys be mature all right let's move on to the next question is there a way I can define the execution order of Oracle triggers? For all the DBS who did not understand this question, let me help them. Let's assume you define three triggers when you insert a record inside the table. So whenever you insert a record, three triggers will be triggered. Like it might have anything, but I'm just giving you an example on the insert event three triggers will be triggered one two three so the question state 
is there a way I can define the execution order of the Oracle triggers? Like when the insert happens, I want that the trigger number one must always fire first. Trigger number two must always fire second and trigger number three must always fire third. Can I define an order for the triggers? Yes, there is a way to define the order of triggers. But before I tell you or give you the answer, let me share with you something important. We had a client where they had some insert triggers inside their database. So they had like two triggers whenever there was an insert happening inside the database. The biggest problem was they could never identify or could never control the order the way triggers used to trigger. Like sometimes the trigger one used to fire first and trigger two used to fire second, but sometimes trigger two used to fire first and trigger one used to fire second. Now there was no control over the triggers and this happens inside the Oracle database. Like if you do not define the priority or the order of the triggers, Oracle has the authority to launch any trigger as per its will and wish. Now, how can you define the order of the triggering or how can you define the priority of the triggering of the triggers? And it can be done in the create trigger statement by using two main keywords. One is follows and the other one is proceeds. So whenever you try to create the trigger with this keyword follows, what happens is this trigger will always be fired after other triggers. Now for the same insert statement, if you have two triggers, you created one trigger, trigger one and trigger two with the follows keyword, what will happen is this trigger will always be fired second. And also when you use proceed uh, this keyword while creating a trigger, that trigger will always be triggered before any other trigger inside the sequence. So for the same insert statement, if you say trigger one proceeds, uh, I mean, if you use that keyword while creating the trigger, so that trigger will always be triggered first and trigger two, which has the follows keyword, it will always be triggered second. So that being said, guys, I would want you to read about these two keywords, which is related to triggers. I'll put the link somewhere below this video where you can go and read more about triggers, how to create the triggers with these two important keywords that will help you. Now that being said guys, I would love to continue to answer your questions. Please don't forget to send your queries to support at dbgenesis.com. For now, let us move on to the most exciting part and that is the bonus question. Alright guys, I'm back and I got this bonus question which is like, how do I start learning cloud? I guess I answered this question in one of our previous episodes, but what I would want to do is, I would not want to take this or answer this question right now. Rather, I guess our next episode is our silver jubilee, that is 25th episode of Daily DBA Show. So in tomorrow's episode, I am going to answer this question as to how to start learning cloud and how to migrate your skill set to cloud DBA. That being said, I will see you all in the next episode, which is which will be a special episode and we all will celebrate our silver jubilee. All right, guys, till then, take care. Bye bye. And don't forget to keep commenting below these videos. Bye.